Bitcoin ETFs, your thoughts on is this a um, is it a play for a retail investor or someone that is maybe not necessarily jumping in or wanting to jump into what's happening in the spot Bitcoin you know marketplace? Yeah, so so I love ETFs. I hate ETFs that are based on futures. And the reason why you should be very cautious about ETFs based on futures is because there's a contract rollover with futures. And there's something called the contango effect where the future contracts generally are higher. So when a an ETF has to roll over the underlying contract, let's say it's at $10 currently and the, few, the next contract is at 11, you're actually getting less Bitcoin by the rollover. So every rollover you do, you're actually losing a little bit of value. So ETFs that are based on futures inevitably go to zero. Now it takes a long time, but my point is investors, especially in the retail side, you have to be very aware. Playing an ETF based on futures like the Bitcoin ETF, great if you're a short-term trader, maybe you want to hold for a couple months, you're looking for a big breakout or, or something like that. But I would strongly discourage people from tucking it away and saying, now I'm long Bitcoin, I'm going to put this in my 401k or something like that and check back mm -hmm. in five years. Unfortunately, even if Bitcoin goes up, you probably will end up losing money on a Bitcoin ETF uh, future. Yeah. It, how does this affect the long-term market from an institution side of things? Is this something that we'll see institution involvement or do you feel like this is eventually, gonna, eventually just going to be pretty much replaced from a market standpoint away from or by a spot ETFs that may be coming down the, the pipe? Yeah, so I, I do think, and in fact, I was surprised that the uh, the SEC approved the futures ETF based on the fact that you know so many retail investors probably will be potentially harmed by it. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think eventually we will get the spot ETFs. Those are the ones that I think investors will want to tuck away. They'll be more matched. Now, granted, remember they pay a small fee. I mean, every ETF right. has a small fee to it. Um, so if you're really a purist, just go and buy Bitcoin, open a Coinbase account or Kraken or Gemini and just do it that way. But I think, again, eventually, the, within probably six months to a year, you'll have spot ETFs. And I think that's really the way to go. Now, I think the, the future ETF is great for traders. And I think the institutions will utilize it as such. They can trade it. They can be in and be out. Um, but again, the institutions know the games with the future ETFs. They're not going to be yeah. in that for the long term. Yeah, that's what I, I fear is that we would see some potential harm to yeah. you know, the novice investor that maybe, it, you know, they're just, they're FOMOing in it, but yet they're not you know, confident enough to maybe go in and actually get into the game from a direct investment, whether it's through one of the exchanges, et cetera. Yeah. That's the concern. And, and, yeah. and, and just a note, you know, you know, I traded in my early career or not in kind of early to mid-level career, there was, there was a period where we started to get these triple ETFs out in like kind of the 2005, 2006, 2007 timeframe. And, and it took me a little while to realize that those all go to zero too. And I, I, you know, with, when they were just emerging, I was a novice at those two, and I didn't really look into them enough. And I lost plenty of money, not because the underlying assets went down, but just because of that effect of a double and triple ETF eventually going to zero as well, just like a futures ETF. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people have looked at uh, this as really just a stepping stone to a spot ETF, which I think is, is the, going to be the case. But the big scenario I always have is, is there an underlying effect here on the marketplace that uh, this was approved by the SEC before we get a spot you know, ETF approved by the SEC? Because essentially, this, if you're trying to protect investors, I would think you would actually maybe hold back from approving something like, uh, like this, especially in the volatility of a market such as this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree 100%. I, I, was, I was honestly a little surprised at it. <laughs> yeah. Let's get into Ethereum. And one, I want to take a look at your chart and what you're seeing on ETH. Obviously, we've seen another all-time high hit uh, this week. Uh, Ethereum, Ethereum over the 4,600 mark and really starting to see some activity again within the ETH ecosystem. But at the same time, gas fees are in essence, at another all-time high. So explain this other than, I mean, obviously we know there's been scenarios with uh, some burning of ETH and we definitely see the inflationary side of it, or I should say deflationary side of it, really playing into that. What are you seeing in the charts with Ethereum and is this a run that is about to happen or do you think this might be a little fake out? 
Yeah. So, so as of, as of now, it looks like ether will confirm. So we were just talking about how Bitcoin had gone yep. above that previous all time high and then reversed back down and didn't confirm. What you can see here is here was your previous high here. It touched it and pulled back here. It closed above, but no confirmation yesterday. You closed above the high yep. and it looks like you'll confirm today with that secondary close above the first breakout high. So to me, what that tells me is the likely course of this is going to 5,000 now. That yeah. even number, uh, oftentimes in charts, whether it's stocks or, or crypto, when you get within about 10% or so of a major even number like 5,000 or, or for instance, Google at 3,000 or stuff like that, you will ultimately get pushed there. It's kind of this, this sentiment driver. So I would say Ether over the next week or two could very easily get to 5,000 in the short term. Yeah. I'm feeling I'm feeling with you. I've got your, I got your back on that one. I'm, I'm pushing a little stronger because I'm looking at Ethereum may be really cracking into uh, an all-time high or, or a new, I shouldn't say a new high. This I follow Raul Powell quite a bit in terms of his, his scenario on Ethereum and just you know the, the fundamentals of what ETH does and, and just the ability of what that marketplace really has to hold. So I'm looking at end of year that this could be a really big asset to hold. Talking about Ethereum, futures ETF, they're talking about coming before the spot ETF of Ethereum. And again, it's kind of the same, you know, round again. Is this a scenario that could slow down Ethereum with another futures traded ETF entering except in the Ethereum space? What are your thoughts there? So, so I think it's going to be the same kind of thing. You'll probably see the hype drive it up in the near term. And then yep. once it comes out, you know, it may hurt investor sentiment a little bit with how the performance is relative with the contract rollover. But I think overall, you know, investors, they they continue to focus on the crypto itself and and i don't think especially in the near term that you're going to see too much damage whether it's from bitcoins you know etf based on the futures or ethers you know it's, yes it's an unfortunate situation where where some investors are going to lose a little bit of money but i still think you know the cryptocurrency space is here to stay um yeah. you know whether or not you see pullbacks here on like bitcoin or a move to five thousand or above on ether you know ultimately the long term is just so bright for this this asset class and i, I can't stress right. that enough even though i'm more of a trader where i'm kind of you know all right, I'm going to look for a pullback, so I'll short it. All right, now I'm going to go long. You know, that's how I trade. But my long-term vision is as much as the Fed wants to say they're going to taper, they're going to raise rates, they never fully get back to where they were prior to the last cycle. Mm -hmm. And then it's lower and lower and more printing we go. And that just makes you want to own cryptocurrency for the long term. Yeah. Gareth, I mean, with the release of the Fed talking about a little bit of a taper here, and some people reacting fairly quickly, I think, on a knee jerk to a certain extent. Do you think this is going to start the tumble away from inflation and maybe even put us into a deflationary potential? I don't believe so. So one of, one of my concerns, and this is one of the things that's bugged me for the last six months, you know, the, six months ago, the Fed said, yeah, we're going to have inflation, but it's going to be very short lived. It's going to be transitory. And then I started to see all these, you know, help needed signs, help wanted mm -hmm. in all these stores and people's wages are just skyrocketing. And the problem is, is when wages go up, we know that that's the biggest input cost to a business, right? Now, a business can't turn around and wage, uh, raise the cost of a widget that they're selling by doubling that widget cost cost or people are going to say, wait a minute, I'm not, I'm not paying, you know, a hundred dollars for a widget when it was $50 yesterday. So the problem is over time, they're going to raise those prices. So they're going to raise it 10%, then 10% to compensate for those, those wage increases. And I really worry that inflation for me is on the uptrend and it's going to be here for at least three to five years. And I think you're going to be north of 5% for that many years. And I worry that you know, at some point, right, we saw COVID hit where the Fed didn't expect that and they had to pump yeah. a trillion more dollars into the system. We saw checks from the government going out like crazy. And then, yeah, sure, things look good now, but how long until we get another issue where the economy stumbles or there's another black swan event and then, you know, interest rates have to go into negative territory and then they have to, you know, reinstitute all the QE and raise it even more. So I believe the Fed is on a one track course here where, you know, yes, they're going to try to show a good, strong force, but I, ne I honestly don't think we're ever getting out of this until, till ultimately things blow up. And I don't mean physically yeah. blow up, just the system kind of collapses. Right. Yeah. In this, in the essence of a full market correction, I've talked to you a couple of times about this in terms of a full market correction. One of the things that concerns me is these new job numbers. This was coming from uh, CNBC. 
Record, this was just here, uh, I think today or yesterday. Um, record 4.3 million workers quit their jobs in August. This was led, obviously, by food and retail industries. And we're continuing to see this kind of move in the job space. With that being the factor, okay, and we've got Fed softening on inflation. We've got uh, market positions, as we know, in terms of dollar value, what that looks like in terms of where inflation is right now, currently. And you look at just the overall structure of where the market is from an economic side. Do you think this is going to play into anything within the crypto space to either one, maybe offer up an opportunity for people to start doing play to earn games or other things within the crypto space? Or do you think this is a precursor to a major market correction that could be uh, around the corner? So, so I do think ultimately we are getting closer and closer to that kind of scenario where you see a liquidity collapse, where, where there's been so much money pumped into the system that yeah. eventually the bubble bursts. If you blow a balloon too big, eventually it pops. Um, the question is, when is that going to happen? What I find ironic is that the Federal Reserve has gone to major extents to kind of keep the market moving up by flooding the system with liquidity. Yeah. And in my opinion, that's actually hurt the the people looking for jobs meaning that you have so many people that have made a decent amount of money in the crypto space or in stocks with the stocks always going up mm -hmm. that you've yeah. actually seen lots of people come out and say hey i quit my job because i'm making more money than i was at my job by by you know trading cryptocurrency or being long ether or polka dot yeah. or, or all these things so it, it's kind of like a weird scenario where the fed wants to get people back to work but at the same time the more money they pump into the system the more people are saying well i can just go long you know tesla and and not have to work mm -hmm. you know so yeah. so at some point the question is does the fed tighten which causes a market correction which then takes away a lot of that money and does do people then say okay i actually go ha have to go get back and get a real job <laughs> yeah yeah, which is the, the scenario that I think a lot of people are looking at. If we see, well, not if, when we see a market correction, how deep do you think this is going to cut? And when it does happen, where does crypto line up in the response to that kind of scenario? Yeah, so so one of the things I've noticed is that if you look since COVID, we have had basically 3% corrections um, that's been the biggest correction, except the last one, which was about 5% or so on the S&P 500. Right. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it lulls people into this false sense of confidence that you can buy every little dip and the markets always make new highs, which they are, by the way, today once again. But yep. the problem is, is that at some point that system breaks down and you'll have people buying and then it goes lower and people buy again. And they really can get wiped out that way because they're just not ready. A lot of investors that have entered this market came in basically in the last year or two, right? And I traded through 2008, 2009, and I saw a bear market that was one of the nastiest in history. And it, it literally went lower and lower for weeks and months and even, even over a year. And, and you, you got hammered if you bought the dip. So I right. do think that people are kind of conditioned to buy that dip. And I do worry that when we do get a bigger cor correction and it doesn't snap back, people will seriously get hit at that point. Yeah. Do you feel like that's more going to be on the traditional finance side with stocks and bonds, et cetera? Or do you think that's going to kind of bleed over into the crypto assets as well? So I think it'll bleed over into crypto because the liquidity in the system is just so widespread where you have people that are leveraging cryptocurrencies through Celsius. Then you have people that are, you know, on huge amounts of margin buying Tesla and they they're, they have both accounts, right? So if you see right. one collapse and they have to cover a margin call, they might sell some Bitcoin or they might sell some Ether. So I think you will see an initial drop in cryptocurrencies, but my expectation would be that the crypto market recovers much quicker than the stock market. So, you know, kind of like during COVID, right? So we saw even gold collapse right, right. away at the beginning of COVID, COVID, but then gold ripped higher as mm -hmm. cryptocurrency did as well. The stock market took a little bit longer. Yeah. Is that a 22? I mean, this is, a, nobody has the crystal ball, but I'm just looking at some of the indicators here with the Fed, with what we're seeing in terms of job conditions, economic conditions, and also global conditions really for the fight of a new world reserve currency as uh, the digital yuan starts to play into this. Do you think this is a 22 or a 23 potential issue that we may face with a correction? 
Man, I, I, that is, <laughs> that's the million zillion dollar question. So uh, to be honest, I, I honestly thought it would have started later this year. I thought uh -huh. that we were going to see more regulation coming on the tax side with, with long-term cap gains maybe rising. That hasn't come to fruition. Doesn't look like it's going to get passed. So that's kind of given the market a pass where you haven't right. seen a lot of big money selling. So I would say 2022 is likely, but again, you know, timing is the hardest thing in the world i mean it's very easy to know the end game but can you time it correctly i right. would again go, go on the 2022 side though yeah last question for you is positioning your portfolio in a time like this and uh, i mean we don't give it financial advice on this channel but if you were doing if i was doing it a certain way what is the strategy you would take so, so the strategy I am currently taking is what's called a long short portfolio, right? So there are certain things like I'm, I'm short the NASDAQ right now at these all time mm -hmm. highs, you know, it's up for, I mean, I think we've had the biggest gain in the NASDAQ in the last right. you know month that we've seen in a really long time. So on a shorter term basis, I'm short the NASDAQ, I'm short a little of the S and P I'm short names like Tesla up here. Um, but at the same time, I'm also long good valuation companies like Viacom discovery. There are some Chinese stocks that even with the regulation in China, they're so discounted that I'm willing to put a little bit of money in thinking to myself, okay, if the US market's correct, I don't think the Chinese yeah. stocks will correct as much. So it's kind of like balancing your portfolio and kind of protecting yourself in many ways. Yeah, for sure. Interesting stuff. Going to be close to watch here. Gareth Soloway coming over from inthemoneystocks.com. So make sure and check him out. Thanks for stopping in today, uh, Gareth. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Excellent. All right. You guys are listening in over on the podcast right now. Thanks for tuning in over there. Uh, one of the best things you can do, of course, is though, is subscribe right here on the YouTube channel and make sure you get into the Diamond Circle. It's one of the big ways that we give back to our audience through NFT and also digital asset rewards. We've got some NFTs lined up uh, coming soon that are going to be dropping within that. We do giveaways from time to time on our live shows. So make sure and tune anytime you see that notification. But if you don't hit the bell, you're not going to get notified when those lives go up. So that's the thing you want to do. And of course, just hit the link right there in the description below to get to the Diamond Circle. If you have an idea for a show or you want us to cover a topic or a, uh, maybe a, a project, a crypto project, drop it in the notes and in the comments below because that's how we feed and we really kind of understand what you guys are looking for. And of course, you can always hit me up on Twitter, which is just at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.